One of the longest serving flat earth YouTubers is a guy called Jiranism. You may remember him from the time where he hashed up on the flat earth documentary on Netflix like his friend Bob did. A 15 degree per hour drift. Not now Bob, but thanks. Okay, go ahead and drive down there Enrique. You're gonna hold the light there. Enrique, how high is your light? 17 feet. I mean, I, you know, it's his, um, there's, we don't see you, Enrique. Lift up your, lift up your light way above your head. Interesting. Yes, that's the one. Anyway, he has recently resurfaced with an absolutely face palming nuke. Get ready. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you from the sponsors of today's video, KiwiCo. KiwiCo is defining the future of play by making it engaging, enriching and seriously fun. They create super cool hands-on projects and toys to expose kids to concepts in STEAM. Obviously that's science, technology, engineering, art and maths. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by kids and teaches a new theme through hands-on learning and fun. And they offer nine subscription lines, each catering to different ages and topics. Each box comes with all the supplies needed for that month's project, so no extra runs to the store or anything. Detailed kid-friendly instructions and an educational magazine as well, filled with content to learn more about that crate's theme. My son and I had a go at the Christmas candle carousel. He absolutely loved it. And it gave him an insight okay. into basic aerodynamics as well. Fun and educational. KiwiCo really is such a great gift option for anyone in your life who wants to create special moments and experiences for their family. A KiwiCo description delivers discovery, curiosity, and excitement long after the Christmas decorations are put away. They also have these amazing holiday projects available as a one per off purchase in addition to their subscriptions. Show your support for this channel while taking advantage of this great offer from KiwiCo. You can get 50% off your first month of any crate. Just head to kiwico.com slash simandan to check it out. Right, back to today's video where unbelievably, Jaron from Jaronism wants to debunk the speed of light. As you well know, science should help us explain reality. It is the systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the universe that we all live in. Over the course of the 19th century, the word science became increasingly associated with the scientific method itself as a disciplined way to study the natural world. Couldn't have said it better myself. Unfortunately, this is gonna be the only time that we actually agree on anything. That same time period also included the origin of the term scientist and scientific community, the founding of scientific institutions, and the increasing significance of their interactions with society and other aspects of culture. And science is built on the idea of an emphasis on experimental data and the reproducibility of its results. So, in the spirit of science and thought experiments, I bring you the speed of light debunked. Now, this is a huge claim because using nothing more than a microwave, a ruler, and a bar of chocolate, I can figure out the speed of light. And yes, I will be doing that in a video at some point. And now this is just a thought experiment. But after this, if you still believe nothing can move faster than the speed of light, well, then enjoy your magical fantasy world built by math and magicians around theoretical nonsense. Well, actually, space itself is faster than light. The universe is currently expanding at faster than light speed. So, but let me guess, that's nonsense as well. And remember, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. It can be counterintuitive and against all your senses because, well, Neil deGrasse said so. Indeed, making sense is something which matters not when it comes to nature. And he knows all about the universe because, you know, he read it in a book. So let's begin with the Earth. And on the Earth, we place a guy. Hi, guy. And away from the Earth, somewhere distant, we put the planet Venus. Somewhere distant? For argument's sake, let's use the closest distance between Earth and Venus in their orbits, which is around 38 million kilometers. Now we're told that that is about 25 million miles from the Earth at its closest. 23.7 million, but who's counting? Now on Venus, we place another guy. Let's just pretend. And he's there, and between them two, 
you give them a solid pole or a solid stick. Now, such a rod may not exist. May not exist. May not exist. Well, I can tell you for sure that it doesn't exist, Jared. But for argument's sake, let's just say it does. And of course that it wouldn't be susceptible to any bending or anything like that. But neither can a cannon shoot a cannonball around the earth. So we're doing a thought experiment here. Sure, but technically you're way more likely to be able to make a cannon that can do that than a 25 million mile long stick. And so if the person on the earth pulled the stick, it would take two minutes for the guy on Venus to feel it, get out. Um, how is this even remotely the same as light traveling over a distance? That imaginary pole of yours is effectively gonna be at both places at once. That's not the same as light traveling over a distance. I mean, come on, for reals, get the hell out of here. This is our science. This is our truth. Science is gonna stand up for this. All right, come on now, this has gotta be some sort of joke. Your thought experiment is a joke if you think it's synonymous with the speed of light. So if we move to the sun and we've got someone on the earth and someone on the sun, and they've got the same rod and they both pull it, what happens? Depends who's stronger. It would take eight minutes for them each to know the other one pulled the stick. So what happens in the meantime? The stick grows magically. This is our science. No, this is not our science. This is your flawed thought experiment. Okay, let's move on to Polaris. Now we've got a person on the earth holding the rod with a person on Polaris. And the person on Polaris shoves the rod forward and the person on earth wouldn't know for 433 years. Right, this is getting ridiculous now. I really do not understand how Jaren thinks that this is an argument against the speed of light. I mean, who doesn't disagree that this is some bullshit? Is someone gonna stand there and tell me that this is reality? There is no speed limit. If I push the stick, the person on the sun or on the moon or on Venus or across a football field would feel it immediately. Yes, but light actually travels that distance. Remember, speed is distance over time. Well, let's look at good old Wikipedia, which says the speed of light in vacuum, commonly denoted as little c, is a universal physical constant important in many areas of physics. Its exact value is 299,792,458 meters per second. And they say this is exact because the unit of length, the meter, is defined from this constant. According to special relativity, C is the maximum speed at which all conventional matter and hence all known forms of information in the universe can travel. Simply isn't true. But a thought experiment doesn't disprove this, especially a poorly thought out one. Come up with an experiment which you think will change that. That's what science is about, experimentation. You said that at the beginning. We can push the stick and it would travel faster than the speed of light. It says for many practical purposes, light and other electromagnetic waves will appear to propagate instantaneously, but for long distances and very sensitive measurements, their finite speed has noticeable effects. In communicating with distant space probes, you know, like Explore 1 and Explore 2, currently 13 billion miles from Earth. Do you mean Voyager 1 and Voyager 2? Explorer. Come on, Jaren, the devil's in the details. It could take minutes to hours for the message to get from Earth to the spacecraft or vice versa. The light seen from stars left many years ago, allowing the study of the history of the universe by looking at distant objects. We see here that it's generally assumed that the fundamental constants such as C, or the speed of light, have the same value throughout space-time, meaning that they do not depend on location and do not vary with time. Down at the bottom we see, more generally, it is normally impossible for information or energy to travel faster than the speed of light. One argument for this follows from the counterintuitive implication of special relativity known as the relativity of simultaneity. If the spatial distance between two events, A and B, is greater than the time interval between them multiplied by the speed of light, then there are frames of reference in which A precedes B, others in which B precedes A, and others in which they are simultaneous. All of which Jaren doesn't understand in the slightest. As a result, if something were traveling faster than C relative to an inertial frame of reference, it would be traveling backwards in time relative to another frame and causality would be violated. In such a frame of reference, an effect could be observed before its cause. Such a violation of causality has never been recorded 
and would lead to paradoxes such as the tachyonic anti-telephone. Well, we just described that happening, and now we see why it doesn't work. Described what? A tachyonic anti-telephone? Hold the front page, people! Jiren created a device to send a signal back into your own past using a giant theoretical pole and his monumental intellect. Utterly clueless. You know, people gave theologians such a hard time, and sometimes rightfully so, because they were motivated not by truth, but to support the theological principles which they had already committed to, and these were fixed and determined in advance. You've literally explained Flat Earth there, Jaron. Such persons are not really engaged in genuine inquiry, but instead a sort of sham reasoning. If you aren't trying to search for the truth, well then you're not asking real questions. Well, watch these comments. Watch the people saying, I'm an idiot. Because they believe that a man on the sun and a man on the earth could be pulling the rod or stick for eight minutes until the other one knew that they pulled it. Yet, in eight minutes, they might have pulled a half mile worth of rod. No, we don't think that because it's stupid. So magically, the rod grows until when? What happens after eight minutes? The rod shrinks? Who loses their end? Does the middle disappear? This proves a paradox and proves relativity to be garbage as well as the idea that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. That for me is the absolute quote of 2021. Jaron claiming that relativity is garbage because of a giant pole. Amazing. The same people who tell me the speed of light is the speed limit of life tell me that this flew to the moon. And this is not an artist's rendition. This is a photograph. And we televised it live. Whoa, 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 whoa. You used my facepalm clip. How very dare you. It was only our first time going. I mean, if they stepped out on the moon and we were attacked by aliens or they died due to an unknown force that crushed their suit, it would definitely help America's prestige and pride to show that all on live TV. Makes all the sense in the world. How could you even question the moon landings? Because of the reams and reams of evidence that they actually did go. I'm not getting to that argument with you, Jaron. I haven't featured Jaron for a while on this channel, but maybe I should more often, because this stuff is absolutely golden. Well, there we go, another Flat Earth Friday, all wrapped up and ready to go. Thank you so much for watching, it's truly appreciated. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we're getting very close to 450,000 subscribers now. I'd love to hit that before the end of the year. Uh, if you really, really enjoyed it, press the like button as well. Just enough time to once again thank KiwiCo for sponsoring today. Remember, visit kiwico.com slash Simandan to get 50% off your first month of any crate. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you all on Tuesday where we go back to look at the Mandela Effect. See you then.